Hello and welcome back to another day of Worms Coding. Today we're working on the video game. Um, I'm leaving the window open today here. If it's too noisy, just let me know and I can close it again. And you can see the sun shining on the one side of my head and my camera's not quite adjusting to that. But if it's too noisy, let me know. Otherwise, I'm going to try and keep this open, the window, um, just because I want to... It's, well, it's summer. It's hot. You'll understand. <laughs> and let's go look at what I have for the worms and... Let's run it. This is where we were from last time. Last time we just added the basic graphics. I mean, we didn't add much for graphics. It's very, still very simple. We just wanted to show how we could add new vector attributes. So we added a normal to the worm. So the sun's coming from up to the side. I don't know. Uh, I pressed the wrong button. So the sun's coming from the top up here. And you can see the shininess on the worm. So the sun's bright here, the light's here, and then it's darker on the bottom. But the place where he's connected, let me start that again place where it's connected, and let me eat a few dots, it forms a continuous body. It's not quite as perfect as we'd want it because it's still just a rather quick rough calculation, but let me show that very quickly. We can get this open here. And I think I have, oh well, I was going to pause. I forgot where I paused, <laughs> but okay, you can see it in red too. So if you're, if you're going down, it is connected. The color is the same here. The, the, the effect of having separate segments is still quite strong though. And it's a bit hard to get rid of without change calculation a lot, but you can see the corner piece is very dark in one section and small on the other side. And it continues this way, so there is that one continuous piece of the body, and even where the head hit the bed here, we're still alive. Now, I want to do two things today. I said I want to make another apple or something that moves, I think we'll put a graphic this time that moves. Oh, allergy season, wonderful. Maybe I have to close the window for that alone, but okay. We're going to make something that moves today, but the one thing I want to do first is, if you look at this, I'm not quite satisfied with that stepping motion, right? Like, the dot, the set, the front of the thing, the front of the piece is like immediately in the next dot. There's no growing or anything, and we have frames in between here. And what I want to do is I want to make the circle grow a bit first. So it's not completely the full size. It grows and it grows until it reaches size and the back one shrinks. I want the back one to shrink so it looks more like, so we actually get more animation frames than what we currently have. And I'm just gonna close. So this is, this over here, this was the, this is actually the leaf compiler code. I was working on that this morning as usual. I work on leaf and so if you're new to the show, we, Leaf is my programming language, and that's part of the show purpose is to use Leaf. And it's not just to show off graphics, because that's certainly not what you're going to see yet. Sometime in the future, we hope to have pretty graphics as we get better at this. Uh, one of these windows, I don't know why it doesn't take this one. And, and you'll see what Leaf code looks like right away. Leaf, where's my algorithms? STL, Wormies, and we have the game renderer. And this font's a bit bigger than I normally have, just for the show. And we'll keep it down to a line length that seems reasonable. I actually downloaded the newest Kate, so because we're having debugs, and some of the bugs were fixed in it. Um, some of them weren't. But there's some weirdness. It doesn't quite blend with my desktop now, and I can't get it to build. Apparently, I need Qt5, which I don't have, and the, the setup doesn't work. But it's better. At least the search and replace bug has been fixed. So let's look at let's take a look at main first of all. Go back to main. Main is the main driver for the code. And it handles the keystrokes as we said. We had an error. We we were handling space before, but there's something wrong with SDL and space. It's not picking it up. It's uh it's doing something really weird. It's just sometimes picking it up, sometimes not. But the pause key it seems to like all the time. So there's something there we have to figure out with SDL. Now it's this part here I'm concerned about right now. What I want to do is I want to figure out, well, what is, sorry, what is, what is, um, but, no, okay, I want partial frames, because right now we do a step, every 150 milliseconds we do a step, a step, and that's almost 10 frames, though, that's like a 10 frame jump, and if we were wise, we'd actually, to avoid temporal aliasing, you, you make this exactly based on the frame rate, but again, you can adjust the frame where it's hard to say, yeah, let's just do 150. But what I want to do now is, first of all, I want to change the way pause works. 
So we can do something out here. We can do far current ticks. And this is whatever the last ticks was. Type in for last ticks. Also equals zero. It is also equals last ticks. And then we're going to do this. We're basically going to do this. Um, I changed the way pause works to calculate this because we're going to have to do, because I have to make sure pause doesn't keep stepping it as well. Not pause, then current ticks equals SDL get ticks. Okay, very similar. If it's not pause, current ticks, elapsed ticks minus blah, blah, blah. And. So what do we have now is this basically does one thing. I guess we didn't need current ticks out here to be honest. I thought we might. We have elapsed ticks and we have a timeout frame here. So what we want to do is we want to put a literal atop first saying literal, um, this is called frame step. And we're measuring this in milliseconds just because we're doing ticks or ticks, frame step ticks. Frame step ticks. <clears throat> now I want to do one more thing. I want to say partial down here. I want to give a partial time. Partial time. And this equals elapsed ticks divided by frame step ticks. It's always somewhat partial. We're, we never quote hit one, and that's totally okay. But this would be an integer division, so we're going to convert this first. We'll also convert this to a float. Again, because the ticks may not completely fit beside a float, so we have to do it lossy. And we have a partial time now, and this should range from 0 to 1. And in the render, we're going to give it the partial time. Now let's go off to the game render. We're going to call for the render loop. And this is going to take now a float, a partial time. Now, I'm not clear if this is actually a good way to do it that maybe this should take the whole game time as well, but the game is stepped. But we'll come back to this when we do the UI and animations, because the UI and animations aren't really going to like partial time. They're going to more want to deal with um, real time, really full time. And again, just let me know if the window, if it's a problem with the audios or the sound, the cars out there. And we'll see whether you guys hold up first or whether my nose holds out first, so all the fresh flowery smell is coming in. So partial time, so we have field render. Let's go check out what field render is and what I want to do with partial time. And we have, when rendering the segments, wherever I render segments, game field or renderer. Okay. And I do that down here. So I have two things here. I have the standard range here and I want to know var partial is i equals zero then we're going to say one minus partial time because that's the last one partial time to float otherwise if i equals oh, what is it We'll state dot body dot get size plus one. It's the last one. I don't know if these ifs are the best way to do this, but that's okay. Otherwise, if it's the last one, we take partial time. Otherwise, we take one. Now let's see if Leaf can actually unify these correctly. There are some floats in here, and these other rationals should be interpreted as floats. So in theory, this should work partial. And then we're going to call partial on the rendering push body segment becomes partial. Partial. And we have this commented out here. We don't use this anymore. Because the body segments are now, the head is part of it. And so now we have, where is that size of the thing? Right here. We have a size right here. 
So let's see what it does first. It's going to be aligning correctly. Let's just multiply by a partial first of all and see what we get. We get errors, of course. I mean, <laughs> uh, five. Oh, I got this backwards. Wow, what a, what a brain flop that was. And wow, I still have errors here. Um, I think it's in the UI render. Let's look at the other render. I think I forgot to pass it time. Right there. So I'll put a to do. Because now I have one where I clearly see that one if missing argument, argument, partial time, then getting weird error message. Oh, now we have to find this again. Now, um, I really wanted to fix this one since last time, but I've been focused on the platform ABI too much. Now, I don't know how... This unambiguous types is basically when it falls back, I can't figure out something. And this could very much do be to some type I've typed in wrong. And... We have a general idea. It's somewhere in here, 6 somewhere here if we do this oh and that gets us further down 308 the the issue here is that um, there's several statements involved and in where it doesn't know what the typing is and I don't it doesn't enumerate all of them although it's supposed to unknown identify partial see now we get this here at 241 and I did the same thing here partial I can do the same thing here. Put a to do. Just specifying float partial then untrackable type error. Whoopala! What have I done now? Oh no. I got another error. That was not intended. <laughs> Um, another compiler error. This is again, again, part of the reason why I'm doing these full programs, these games in this is because it doesn't matter how many tests I have for Leaf, how many things I cover, there's always these little things that keep coming up more and more fun. And this one here, I just got to figure out which one it is. Is it main? Is it main? Come on, main. Let's just not even call renderer. I don't know, so how much did we actually change? Wonderful, this really sucks now. Um, let's just take these out. Where's our partial time stuff? Partial time. Now I'm concerned that the UI renderer isn't showing up in my searching. Right here. Well, let's get rid of it first because we want it to. We don't need. We know that one doesn't need the partial time. And so it has to be the field renderer. So if we just get rid of the field renderer, let's see what happens. <laughs> um, debugging um, debugging compilers can be a real pain when you have a full project. Okay, so the field renderer is part of the issue. Of course, it's also not doing the UI rendering, which is strange. So I took out render. Let's make sure this all works here. Put this back in. I've ended up doing such debugging like this in other languages as well. Sometimes, usually lower level stuff, when you just have stuff that you're not sure something breaks, and you just slowly go back and enable it back and forth again. So we're just going to re-enable this stuff bit by bit. We can give it this. 
fine, so that's not where it is. I'm guessing all the stuff we had before is fine, so let's open up this whole bit here, all the way down to the thing we didn't actually do before. All right. Now, the body segment, let's see if the body segment causes the problem. We don't call it yet, but maybe that's where it is. Aha! One sixty five. Oh, no, that's this thing here. Push body segment is somehow wrong. Oh, I forgot to uncomment the whole thing. That would cause a problem. Okay. Now, that push body segment takes a long time to compile, which kind of bothers me. It made a big difference in how long the game took to compile. Um. I'm gonna have to go figure that one out, but I can I can do it. So now what's inside this renderer here somewhere is the problem. Okay, so more than likely it has to do with this bit here that we changed. Okay. Now let's simplify this loop here and say one more is partial time, otherwise one. And I have to render it as well. I guess this is going to be a little bit slow. We should actually check that it is the final one. <laughs> um, I have the same problem again. SDL isn't recognizing keystrokes correctly somehow. It's like not responding to all of them. But I might just be typing slowly. Alright, so there was something there. As I said, something about the unification. So the unification here apparently didn't survive correctly. It got something wrong. To do got unification wrong. Produced a uh, let's see what it produced. Oh, yeah, produced compile compile error. Let's just say that. I'll find it again. So we're gonna do a variation of this. I'm gonna say partial equals one, and then avoid that double fix there. This is this is just a workaround. I equals zero, or if I equals zero, then Partial equals i minus 1 minus i time. Then partial equals partial time. Let's see if that fixes it. I this should probably be a float, and this is probably this is probably why the unification is doing something weird. It's unifying incorrectly. And we're not doing head correctly. We have the bot back, back one. We have some issues to fix. And this should have been minus one, of course. Minus one. So now you have the basic growing. It's not so satisfying. It's, it's not quite growing in the right location. We might not want to do the scaling that way. We should probably do it in the direction of what they have. But at least we're showing that we have those subframe rendering now. And you have a better chance to respond. The reason this is is that you know as a user you can better track where the frame is by having this. We have to clean this up a little bit because it's a little bit hectic. And what I'd rather do is it's grow in the direction of, of where they're going, not necessarily... Yeah, so let's do a direction first. Because I don't want it to pop up in the middle of nowhere, I want it to actually grow from where it's coming. So it grows from that side piece there. Alright, so let's see how that actually works. <laughs> it's 
So it's going to be this base X base here, and and you can see the two dudes are piling up. So I really have to get back to these things. And again, as soon as I'm at ABI, I'll clean up some of these two dudes. But there is a very important thing missing in Leaf so far, and that's still um, interface types or traits from Rust or anything that ha allows you to deal with things in a generic fashion. And that's going to be a fundamental limitation in the way we develop the game. And so that's going to have to come at some point. Now, what do we do with... Uh, we have a direction here somewhere. I'm positive we have a direction somewhere. And, 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 and. And that's the option previous angle and option next angle. All right, so let's take a base. We're going to start with the base, and wherever we're going to attach the base. We actually have to put patch the base up up here. So adjust scale slash base for partial. So let's say var base equals base point. And scale is okay. Then we gotta say now we should say partial does not equal one, but because this is floating point, we should just make the algorithm deal with uh, deal with it. Except we have to decide. <laughs> anyway, let's just do this. Let's just say. Actually, we can stick this right up here. The comment doesn't make sense. Do it up here. And what I want to do is if you have a previous, and if you're the head or a tail, you're only going to have one a previous or next. So that's how we can differentiate which partial one we want. And segment point angle, what I actually want now is segment direction. I thought we wrote one of those. And, oh shit, it doesn't matter. We, I'm being silly. I mean, we can actually just do the subtraction. We can do direction, so our direction, and this is going to be an I point equals 0, 0. We have to specify the type here because the right side is not enough to specify the type. Otherwise, that will infer a type of a tuples of integers, what we wanted. In this case, the direction actually equals. And this is the direction where I want to shift towards the partial. I want the partial to shift towards to here. So it's going to be get up previous segment minus position. And I don't think I have to find that yet. We can do some rudimentary overloading in here. Not a lot, but it should work. And it's based on just names. For the basic operators, just based on the names, just match. Subtract operators maps this map to, <laughs> to a sub. And we're going to force the return type here too, so we get the correct type. And we're going to do a dot x minus b dot x, a dot y minus b dot y. If you watch my other streams on Rust, you'll see me doing these types of things very, very often. <laughs> Writing point classes. Sorry, that I, I'm going to. Maybe I should close the window. I'm going to close the window for a second because it's too many trees outside. Um, lots of trees. Maybe I shouldn't have called my language leaf leaves. Well, leaves are my friend. It's just the flowers that come with them. Um, game render suite. Subtract that. Otherwise, the direction equals... And what I just said, this is the direction we want to move towards from the previous two new one. And so this is the exact same thing here from position minus get opt 
next segment. It's not quite the same thing with the angles because the angles are for rendering and this is for actually moving. And I don't know if we're going to be able to do it times here. We're going to find out. And wherever the base is, we're going to push the base, base, because we have a new base point. Push the base point off and base equals base. I think we can actually do. Whoa, this is going to be weird. Let's see if we can. Let's see if all these overrides actually work. Direction times partial. Let's see if I can overload this all. This will be a good test. Divide. Multiply is going to be a bit weird. I do I point b is an integer. This becomes an i point. In theory, this should work in the compiler, but I've never actually tested this. And there was also a plus or add. You have to get the right names. I point B, I point. This works, I'll be surprisingly happy about the language. If it doesn't work, we're just gonna do it inline and move on. Oops, I pressed the wrong button. Wow, what keystroke? Some sort of keystroke just killed it on me entirely. And this window is in the wrong order. Kate, Kate, Kate still has closing issues. If you don't close correctly, I guess the wrong one. And I gotta set. We're on the stream, so that should be okay. Game render. All right, so let's see what happens. Let's see what errors we get. Unknown base points. Um, where do I set the base points? Oh my, a base is gonna be. Let's just do it this way. We're going to have to do it the other way. Base equals. Base is an I point. It's a lossy float. We're going to convert the position to a float. And then base point, we're going to switch back to this. This is lost GL float. And this, we're going to move this back to base point. We need those in GL floats. All right, two forty-three, and no, all that stuff I just did. Let's create another one. Let's create a similar class called F point. F point, and. Or shall I just directly do it to GL render point, GL float? Let's just do them directly on GL float and see if that actually works. Now there is a way to do templates on this and so you don't have to rewrite the same ones. But GL float two. And I'm just taking the naming convention of GL here. I don't I don't like this naming convention, but it'll work. And then we're closer to the GL standard than we normally be. And then we have a GL float two, and this should have just been a. This can be any old float. This can be a GL float. I just give it a float, and that should work as well. And we're just going to do a lossy on this, though. Lossy. We'll let it convert to the right type, whatever B was. Which means we could actually leave B on type, but let's leave it type for now. Not temp fate at this exact moment. And add, that's correctly add. And let's see where the partial is. And so we can just call this one GL float 2 now. And this has to become a GL float. A GL float. 
And if you have any questions about anything in the compiler, GL, the game itself, don't hesitate to ask. So now I don't need base point again. So now I have base, it's going in circles here. Unknown symbol get up to right, 259. Mismatch type, 259 as well. Get opt. Okay, so this is taking the segments. And let's do a conversion. Um, Geo float to from. And let's do an I point here. Geo float to. And here we're just we're going to make this simplified rather than copying it over lossy a dot x lossy a dot y and where was the line error that was two fifty nine that was probably here geo float two from now these are something later in the language where we might want to be able to define conversion operators instead, but you're still going to have to type them because the rules for conversion operators are always going to be, they can't be lossy by default. So you're, even the conversion system would still not approach this one because the result of this doesn't technically fit inside a GL float too. So there's always going to need to be an explicit conversion here. We have some direction wrong. You know what it is? It's because the partial here. We want to offset minus the partial. So going up and down appears to kind of work one direction and it's not still ideal of course but why does it work up and down but not left and right that's a bit weird. So why doesn't it work left and right? Huh. There's no logic here for left and right and up down. It's the exact same. Geo float to from. Anybody see the issue here? Um, feel free to say hi if you're out there. Let me know as well. Um, <laughs> cheer me on here. But I'm happy that the actual overloads work. So at least I'm happy about that. Now I have to try and figure out where. Why did this? Uh, why is it only working in one direction? And it should only be 0 0.5 as well, so let's just time that put in right away. Then it then it will then it'll grow from the right place at least. And ignore the starting thing there. So left and right doesn't work. But up and down appears to work. You can see up and down is actually down is working. Well, except not the trailing bit. The head's working, but the trailing bit doesn't. And so you can see the head coming in as we go down. And what's nicer about this motion now too is that um, you can see how fast it's going in comparison to before. All right, so we have something really weird here. Previous segment's broken. 
and we want to move from the previous segment to the current segment. So that's backwards. If it's the last one. And if it has a next segment, Oh wait, I'm thinking back and forth here. No, okay, okay, this is a um, previous segment for the head. The head has a previous segment. And we want to move from the head towards the previous segment. So that was correct, from the head towards the previous segment. And if it has a next segment, then we want to move from the previous segment to the next segment. Wait, that's correct. And if it has both of them, it doesn't matter because the partial is going to be zero anyways. <laughs> Except, it still has that 0 0.5 there. No, partial is going to be 1. So that's fine. Partial is going to be 1 in those cases. Partial equals 1 when it's full. Alright, so as a correct, you have previous segments. You want to move towards it. So you take the previous segment minus position. That's the vector from our current position to the previous one. That makes sense. And... Yeah, you want to move half that amount, and then, okay, so why is this not working? I didn't change anything. Why is this not working? Let's press pause here somewhere. Okay, so it's not moving it at all. It's got the scale, but it's just not moving it in the x, y. Which is kind of wacky. Oh, we have a time issue here. Oh well. I'll worry about that after, so we're still... And... It's not offsetting it. Let's do something very costly here and just print... 0.x and 0.y. See what's doing. Oh no, not this instance again. Too many calls to print line. Um, I'm just going to recompile that out for now. This is they say this was just hard coded as a sanity check. Yeah, uh, in the in the compiler, and it really has no. It just means you can't have too many instances of the same uh, parametric function, which makes no sense, of course. And where does it say the issue was in context 136? And let's just up this to 20 for right now. We'll rebuild the distribution there and see what happens. Just get by that one. You'll notice a big to do on that as well, that I'm actually doing the instancing wrong as well. And it's really hard to explain now why, but. Alright, so what do we have for values here? Zero, everything's zero. Well that would that would be the reason why. But wait, if we're going up, we don't have zeros. Like it partially works. It's minus one all the way. They're both minus one. Um, did I screw up the subtraction somehow? Very carefully sub. Aha! Uh -huh. That probably means I point is screwed up as well. This is generally why you should write test cases for such things.
Now the head grows. The back end trails in the wrong place though. It's really hard to see what the head's actually doing. It's like crazy. So the end is in the wrong way. And that's when we have the next pointer. Next, next segment. Yeah, we want the same thing. Should be the same order here. Let's get rid of this. So now he's growing and shrinking. It does actually look better. It's quite fast. I don't know if we want the actual, just the scale or the width or something like that. And but I think we can leave this for now. It makes it look kind of like the worm is doing something. And now when you can see it grow, it's very clear when you press the button which one is actually growing on. Assuming the button is responding at a different, different, decent time. Now you saw the wrapping issue, and I don't know how to deal with that. The wrapping issue here is watch what happens when it's too far. Oh, ignore that. Right, because when it goes that way, it jumps the screen because I'm not using the direction, I'm doing a subtraction. And the eye point can't be normalized. But we can definitely normalize the G float stuff. And the direction should be normalized. All right, so let's do a definite normalize. GL float two. Eight on x times eight on x. And b dot x times b dot x. And we said math dot how was our exponentiation function. Would we'll assume this is non-null for now. It's easier that way. Eight or next to of my line, eight or y divided by line. Oops. Now the cross screen thing is still not working correctly because when it wraps, um, yeah, these are all because it's in float, not GL float. It's still going to be wrong because you don't get the jumping across the screen though, at least, but it does go in the wrong direction. And the reason it goes in the wrong direction is because it does have a different part of the board. So what we really need is something that says how detects the wraparound as well. Now, I mean, the animation is still quite fast because it's only 10 frames. It's only 10 frames for the animation, but it's enough to show that he is animating. And the rest of him doesn't actually move, which is fine. We could make him slightly move if we wanted to. Now, there's clearly an issue with SDL. The key's not registering appropriately. I really don't know what that is. 
So normalize isn't technically correct. Um, what I can do is, where is this? Where do I do normalize? We can normalize in a different direction. We're going to do, instead of normalize, we're going to do it on these. We're going to do wrap normal. And this will be a magical function that just understands the way it's working, wrap normal. Now let's define a wrap normal function. And it takes an I point and it returns an I point. Limits to plus slash minus one on either axes. Axes assuming a wrap. So we can return a dot x less than minus one. So if it's more negative, then it's actually going to be a positive one. Otherwise, if a dot x is greater than one, it's going to be a negative one. Otherwise, it's going to be an a dot x. And we might have that issue about the typing here killing us again. Did I forget something? 278. Too many brackets. All right, it's going quite fast, but I think it works. You should see him come in on the other side. Yeah, he comes in on the other side, and that wrap around basically means if it detects the new position is too far away, it assumes it wraps around in just the direction in that case. Because it just flips the direction. So if it goes from here to here, it says, oh, that's too big, so I must be going the other direction. And so now we have the growing worm. And now I'm going to try and figure out what the hell is wrong with the events. It might be the keyboard. Um, I've had a problem before. These, uh, I had an older Cherry keyboard and the escape key didn't register from the side. So if you hit the thing from the side it didn't register all the time. And now that I've hit it a few times, it actually appears to work better. Like something had the key sticking or something. So I should be able, I, I think it, I missed one again. It keeps missing one, this keyboard. And there is a no ev ev tool ev test no 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 um, there's a way to see keystrokes on the keyboard um, let's see if we can find that and yeah, we don't need that anymore it's the event sh show key events x windows is it just ev Windows. Uh, we have X -M is what it is. And I want to see what happens if it's actually this keyboard. And so I did left, and none of them ever seemed to fail. Uh, 
Alright, so up left, right, down. Up left, down, right, I mean up left, down, right. Let's do it again. Let's just clear the screen. Oh, that won't help because here. Clear the screen. It's gonna get and I'm gonna do up left, right, down, up left, right, down. What happens? Mm, it doesn't appear to be the keyboard, so it's something weird with uh let's kill the event tester. Um, let me check when I'm testing level X MTX. I thought I was check. I'm pretty sure I am testing key down. Now I'm checking SDL key down. And key down, and what do we have? Let's see what keys we get. And it's going to play the game and see when I see one, what happens. Key ev dot key sim dot sim. Figure out if we're missing a key or something we're doing wrong. Maybe we're pushing something wrong with multiple events. I thought we queued up events, but maybe we're handling something wrong. Uh, key F. Oh yeah, that's what we do here. It missed one right there, a left. Well, that would be really helpful if I knew which one it was. Um, so it went six three six, and it missed a left. Let's see which one left is. Left is four. So alt's always going to come that way. That's fine. And that's six four. That was up, no, up right. Is six three up left. Right, it didn't get my keystroke. So, I don't know what it is, but it's... I don't know if I'm just typing it wrong, but it doesn't appear to be getting some of my keystrokes. It's hard to imagine that uh, SDL doesn't do that. But maybe it's just because the way I'm playing the game, this may be a keyboard issue that the keyboard just doesn't respond very well. Because if I sit here really focused, it doesn't seem to cause a problem. It's only if I start going fast that it seems to miss a keystroke. And usually the combination of up and left. Or if I somehow hit the second one first or something. Or if I press down then left. There's something weird when it's already going the same direction first of all. I'm just going to ignore it for now because I don't know what else I can possibly do about it and I'll just assume it's me doing something wrong.
And the step here now, it's hard to say how we prevent the flickering, right? This initial flickering right here, whether it's a big deal or not, it may not be. We can just ignore it for now. Let's just ignore the flickering. Now let's work about the second one. Let's make a, actually when it grows though, Now when it grows, it flickers, so let's get rid of that. Although, maybe it's not so bad. Yeah, that looks kind of ugly. So let's fix the growing render defect first, because we know what it is right now. If it's zero, and... a function is body full. Return body dot get size is greater than or equal to body length. And not state dot is body full. Well, that didn't work as intended. Well, it only flickered once, though. All right, so this should say, if i equals zero, And it's full, sorry, and it's full, then we do it. There we go, so it doesn't start shrinking until the next one appears. And the initial flickering we can deal with, that's just kind of a weird point of the game. Before it starts, we'll do like the classic games, we'll just call it a, a feature instead of a defect. Now the next thing, I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit this, the next thing I wanna do is I have a moving dot on the screen. And graphics work. Push this up. If you're looking for this code, the leaf code itself, that is actually on. I don't know. That is open. That's on my GitHub account. I'm doing these ones on GitHub just because it's so I have some stuff there. And there's a wormish directory. But the whole library is one level up. But this is how you'd run it. If you have Leaf installed and built on your system, and I'm in the Wormies branch, then you test it. There are some other other ones you can test as well. And you can grab them and play with them. So that's committed. So what I want to do now is I want to have a second dot that's moving. Let's go to the game. We have an eat me, and then we're gonna have a chase me, and I point. Because, hey, why not? Set next chase me. Set next, there's a bit of redundancy here, and I don't know how to fix it quite yet. Chase, we can make one function here at least to, uh, Save dot location, and we'll get random eat location. And this returns an I point. We're going to coerce it here because we otherwise it won't work. And so ne next eat me then just be get random eat location. And set next eat me it should be internal as well. So it just carves those off. And 
set next chase me. Get random eat location. And where is this eat me now? Everywhere eat goes once. All right, so we do the same thing here. Equals head position chase me. And I'll duplicate for now, and we'll look at it later. Score plus equals one, body length plus equals two, sets next, chase me. Okay. Well, what we're going to do is, uh, go away, on the step, the step we're going to do chase me dot x equals mod chase me dot x we'll just make it move one direction for now plus one and the game size is size size dot x okay and where is eat me here Wish box state me, eat me, eat me, and eat me is going to have a more greeny color, I guess. Oh, we're green. I'll make it more of a yellow color. So let's see what happens now if we run the game. Oh no, my come on game. Something incorrect here. Oh, right here is weird. I completely removed the random code. What did the random code look like? Actually, I actually like that better. Um, no, we're not rendering. This dot's in the wrong location. Set next chase me. And integer. Chase me, eat me, set next chase me. <clears throat> oh well I called eat me again. And so now it's moving around, which is good. Now I'm trying to exec a debug defect here, which I'm positive we can get. He's just going to skip it once. Yeah, right there. Right, and the reason why is because it may have been in a different location before. It skipped over the head, and because we crossed, and they're not exact exact same location, so we should have the previous location as well. So we're test testing for eating it. If we're at the previous location of the thing as well, maybe, maybe. Um, Or we just check the second location of the element. I'm trying to think of how we do that. What's an easy way to do that? We could check if we are at where it was before we're allowed to eat it. But that also leaves weird cases where you can walk beside it and not actually eat it. Which would be a bit weird. So I'm trying to decide how do we get the one where we actually eat it. All right, I'm just wondering where. Um, what's a good way to decide? I'm not. I'm not sure logically what makes sense for how we actually decide. Clearly, in this case, clearly in this case, we should have eaten it, but this should be based on direction because if we go by it, or if it just happens to run into where, ah, just we'll just check the second location as well. if the dot happens to be on the second location as well. Chase me. We're just gonna make an assumption here. Body dot get size. What do else? Body that gets size is greater than one and equals 
body do I want? Body to get size minus two. Come chase me. And this is actually all part of an or condition. Let's just duplicate for now. Is actually get all right so we're gonna eat it in theory we should have already missed one of these but now we have the moving dot as well And see, that was the one case I wanted to avoid. We actually eat it going by, but I don't think any player is going to complain that it gets eaten as we go by. Now, it always moves in the same direction, which is kind of no fun. So let's make it move in a random direction. We still have this other dot we can eat as well. All right, but it's feeling more like a random sort of dot thing. die we probably shouldn't keep flicking like that but that's not my big concern right now uh, maybe he's just wagging his tail so this this doesn't look so good here we can fix that a bit later and what I want to do is I want to give it a position set next chase me equals and chase me dir and we're gonna have to simplify this afterwards bar chase me dir it's also an eye point And this becomes random integer minus one to one, two. That sounds weird, I know. It's occasionally not going to move on us, but I'm okay with that. And where's chase me? Chase me equals. Now we have this mod here. We're going to keep doing it mod this way. Let's chase me dir.x size.x we're going to do it this way instead of making a wrapping addition because it's just clear we're not going to use wrapping addition that often or one might chase me chase my So that one gets pretty hard to eat there. That one doesn't move. I'm not sure if I like the diagonal moving or not. Those are exceptionally hard to chase in this game. I think the vertical moving is better. Just one let's just move one direction. And chase me deer. Now chase me deer can have we have select statements and I've honestly I've forgotten how to use them in Leaf because I don't use them very often they're an underdeveloped feature but let's test out how they're used start out Leaf, start out LFB And they have that type of comparison. And all right, let's do it that way. Chase 
chase me deer. Chase me deer is going to be. I'm going to do var deer equals random integer. And there are four directions. So zero to four. Now we're going to do a select. And so the select still requires a bunch of comparisons in it. And you can't take the value in it. So it's not really ideal yet. It's not really quite what we want in the language, but we're getting there. And what was that last one look like? Oh, it never doesn't, doesn't put any of them in the thing. Question, question, question. Yeah, and these are conditionals. And I'll explain why that works that way right now. And this becomes it's zero one comma zero. Minus one comma zero direction. It's two. So we can put it this way zero comma one. Direction equals three is going to be zero zero comma minus one. And actually you're just gonna put the default that way. And the way that what select actually does is select takes the list of optional values. And this is why it's not traditional. So it's it. There's nothing special about this set. This is not like a select case. This is a, this is a set of optional values, and it takes the first one that evaluates to correct value. Otherwise, it returns the last one, and that's how we. It's a useful feature, but I think we also still need a switch type statement. Now get back here. I hope it's not going to always go the same way. Uh oh. <laughs> um, it's not looking good from what I just did and oh it does go a different way so that was just incredibly unlucky all right so that was just incredibly unlucky the first ones all went the same direction Maybe this one should be worth more points, but make us grow longer, faster. Yeah, let's let's do something weird with that. Let's make this one worth. And let's give it two points and the body increases three. That makes them slightly advantageous to eat. So you go three from them, but you gain two points instead, instead of one. Which makes them overall better to eat than the static dots. But not exceptionally better it's still worthwhile to go for the static dots if they're there. And that'll make it harder for us to write a computer AI because it's not as clear what they should do. Because the computer AI is mostly most likely gonna win just by just never dying. And so the game's looking like this. Now I want to put a texture on these dots. Like some sort of graphic on them, just so we have another GL feature. Because we have we have the moving now, and I think that's okay. We should probably make these appear somehow. We can add more graphics later, but I would rather add a texture to it to see how it works. Technically, also add a texture to the worm, but that requires even more. Or maybe not. Maybe not a texture. I don't know. I don't know how to do these things. Um, What else should we do right now? See, it ends up getting really hard to get that yellow one. So it might be worth even more. Oh, when I died. Um, what can we do now? I added a moving one. So we have more of the game, and we could add more moving ones, I guess. Add more dots at once. We'll just leave that for now. Get status. Add moving food. 
get push. There's a good status here. Not bizarre. It's bizarre over here. Oh man, if you have to merge something, merge platform and extend template instances. And there's no AM on that. I'll push this up. Let's see what else we can do today. What do we want? So we have that. Whoa, we could. Um, Now the moving one, we have an issue with it right now. It has the same thing, it's stepping along. We prefer to have this move continuously. Let's see if we can get that working. What would that require to have it move continuously? It needs to have a previous position. So let's give it a previous position and then we can make it move smoothly around. So we have a grid but it's still going to work and that's in the gate. And this is where we might start abstracting this stuff out but let's just do it this way now. And then we can see where the structure is going to be here. Um, actually let's do another one. We're going to do a... Uh, this is now going to be a tuple or type def. Game dot. And it has a position, which is an eye point. And it has a direction, which is an eye point. And it has a previous position, which is an eye point. And chase me is a game dot. And we'll convert the uh, eat me to a game dot later as well. We have to add more things to it. So where is chase me? Chase me, sex not chase me chase me dot position and chase me dot previous position equals chase me dot position and chase me dot chase me dot direction equals that and now we can make a function called head position or just check this one um, eaten and we'll just copy the tuple around right now. We'll just say uh, what, and this will be the what do we ever called it, the game dot. It's going to return a boolean, and this is this code here now. So we can get rid of the duplication a little bit. We're going to say if equals head position to what dot position, then return true. Body size is greater than one equals one is also into the what position, then return true. Otherwise, we return false. So now we can say down here, we can say eaten head position, chase me. Then we just have one then statement, and it does both of them. And we can change the other one to that afterwards. And where's the next chase me? And what we can do here now is um, it's going to be the same thing. Well, let's just do this. Step dot chase me. We'll just do it by copy. I'm not so concerned about that. These are cheap to do. These are cheap ones. Dot. It's a game dot. And it's going to return a game dot as well. So we're going to need it. We dot dot. Uh, dot dot position equals. Dot dot position dot x. Dot dot direction dot x and size dot x dot dot shouldn't name variables dot because then you have dot 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 um should probably call it what but okay I'm I'm happy with this and 
and dot dot previous position equals dot dot position and then we're just going to return dot and see what error we get oh I forgot the commas there's an open um, request open issue that this should work without commas as well I asked over on dev2 and most people seem to agree that it'd be nice to work without that as well oh yeah I this is another feature of the feature of the language, and it's it's in, in debate whether parameters are mutable or not. And parameters at the moment are not mutable. So we can say what up here, and then we're going to do var dot equals what. And there's a lot of sense in making it not mutable. It fixed a compiler error, but when getting to it, I was thinking about well, you know, actually it doesn't make sense. These things by default by value should not be mutable. This actually opens up a lot of avenue for optimization, and it's actually not very common in that when I made the change in the code, the compiler, all of my examples still worked. <laughs> and it's very infrequent to use. Maybe one or two failed. One actually ends. And typically it's like an X. Um, but it's one of those things that's probably going to define, it's going to be part of the defining things in the language and things to point out. You can't get it wrong because the compiler is going to tell you that, but it's something you should just be aware of. He's position 84. Now, what have I done wrong? Oh no, what have I done wrong? Eaten, chase me. Game dot, I point. Eaten. And, oh yeah, that only takes one position. Eat me, chase me. Unknown symbol step dot. Step dot would make sense. Oh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Oh, yeah, that makes sense. The render 349 takes a position now. Chase me dot position. Now, this works exactly as it does before, except we have a previous position. And the render is going to be able to use that to make it move partially. And what may seem odd here is what we're doing is we're actually keeping the game working in a step mode and making the renderer deal with the temporal interpol interpolation. Okay, there I pressed right many times and it just wasn't going right. It's weird. And so now we want to make it go partially. We want to do a direction. And how did we calculate the direction before? We had something in here. What do we call wrap normal? Wrap normal is what we want. Our chase direction equals wrap normal state dot chase me dot position. And we want to move towards the previous position. That doesn't really make a difference direction from the previous one. Times partial. Yeah, no, let's do the previous one. Previous position minus state position. So then we're going to take the position and we're going to do chase dir times partial. And hope this works. Partial time. Partial time. We're trying to make it move in a continuous fluid motion. Oh. Okay, yeah, we had to convert it. Geo float to from. Oh no, but push box now. Push box now is going to take a floating point one. It's going to have to deal with that as well. Well, that's not really what I want to do though. So, what push box actually has is no.
Yeah, we can make push box. It's not push segment. Push box works okay. Push box is going to have an actual position, a partial position, and it has to have a. We have to convert the previous position, and we have to convert independently the GL floats. Maybe yucky, we need a helper function here somehow. And that partial time. And so be a GL float to from eat me. And push box now will take a floating point position. And this can be a GL float to now instead. So we don't need any of these lossy things here. Because we're going to convert out earlier. <laughs> it's going the wrong direction. Okay. <laughs> I always get it wrong the first time. Um, so the previous position minus the current position. It means it goes in that direction. And partial time means how much closer are we to the next position. Uh, so we do it the other way around. Now what we lose here though is we lose the clarity that the user doesn't really know where the dot actually is. But we have exactly what we want. We have the dot moving now in a continuous fashion. And see there is the issue there that we didn't really... Oops. Because the game's not continuous, we know this way we're going to for sure eat it. But you notice the delay on it. Let's get the delay somewhere up in the middle. Like the delay is almost... Like it has to go all the way through me first. Now I'm trying to think why is that? It has the current position and our current position. And it should have already eaten them. Why does it look like it's taking that one turn to eat it? If anything, you'd think it'd eat it too early. But somehow it eats it too late. Oh man, I'm gonna make a way. <laughs> I'm thinking about it. I, I'm really not good at my own game. I'm thinking about it at the same time. Right, and this is now the issue that visually it's not quite in the right place. Now I don't know how bad that is. How important is it to have it visually in the correct place? It is moving. So we could fix the game engine and say, well, pick it up if you're close enough. Well, what does that even mean? Because why did it take so long to disappear? Those ones are fine. Mainly it seems to be working though. Um, oops, I missed it. The cases where you miss it can be kind of annoying. Maybe it should be a discrete form as well, though. So it's clear that you've missed it. So inside a continuous motion, we can make it sort of discrete motion, squish and go, squish. And then it looks like it's moving, and so you may have just missed it. It snuck out of the way or something. And how oh, else can I eat? Come on, eat this, eat this, eat this. So maybe continuous isn't so good. Maybe it should be more discreet because it fits better with the game. But I mean, I, I, then we can't show any animation how the partial stuff works. So let's just leave it for now. <laughs>
it's not ideal. Um, I mean, it's kind of the core mechanic, though, so it should work. From a user point of view, we can simply say if it was at the previous position as well, and that would fix it from the user point of view. Let's just do that. And that actually simplifies the logic of the head. Eaton then is not actually, Eaton is going to simplify and do this instead. Equals head position what dot previous position. Then return true. And this will let us gobble it up regardless of where it was. And <laughs> it looks really funny when that happens. I mean, it's not perfect. We, we, it's hard to line this up with the visuals because the game is stepped. We're trying to add non-step visuals onto it. But I think the non-step visuals are worth the thing because, I mean, let's be realistic right now. I mean, it's not ideal. We, we, do, we don't have an audience <laughs> that's going to get start complaining about this. But like really that one time there was really too much. So I'm not clear how to fix this right now because it's just kind of incompatible with it unless we start doing unless we make the game fully aware of the time frame that we have which we don't really want to do, right? Because that thing is never in the right location. And so the best thing to do would be a more discreet. Um, I don't know if now, I don't know how to fix that for now, other than just making it more discreet and or making the animation a lot faster. We we could do that to keep the keep it up that way. We could actually say here var I don't have a name for it, so I'm just gonna call it C time. I'm going to do a math on this, a math dot closer to 1. So we need to be the square root, so power of partial time comes 0 0.5. And this will restore the discreteness to it. It'll still be animated, but it'll look more discreet. It'll be walking around. And. Not so much, apparently. Let's take the cube root. Now it, it steps around and looks kind of awful now, but it's very clear that you're trying to chase this thing. And I don't know if this is better. It really, it really for the core mechanic, I think to fix this correctly, the game is going to have to be aware of the partial time, but I don't want to do that now. It's not what we're going to do in this game, so I think we're just going to... I don't know. I don't do with it. I just don't know. Um, I don't think it's. I don't think it's working very well there either. If we square it, or cube it, what would happen is it's going to suddenly jump. It's going to do kind of the opposite. But it's in the wrong position now.
Do we eat it at the right time? Pretty close. One behind, it looks like. This it's restores some of the motion and I don't know if it's good. I really can't tell you what's happening. So we're gonna kind of leave that. Like you can really eat something when it's not in there. We take the current position times the chase direction. And there's still something wrong with that. I want to take the current position minus the previous position from there to there. This should be the previous position. Maybe that's the issue. It should be showing the previous position plus the chase direction. Let's just say partial time this way again. I think maybe that's it. I think I was rending her from the wrong location. And this should be better now. That actually looks better. That looks like a much better connection. So there was just an error. Oh. Yeah, that looks better. I'm no longer rendering in the wrong location. Okay, what do we, yeah, I think that's okay. I think it was just a mistake. Now we can make this thing annoying and what we could do is we take a sign and sign is between zero and pi. No, I'd like a sinusoidal in, and how does that work? And how do I do the sinusoidal in? I want to do... Sine partial time times math.pi. This will be one cycle. Plus one. This will be too much. It has to be divided by two. And... The whole thing divided by two. Bouncing the wrong, I wanted to make it just keep going like iteration wise, but that might actually just look bad. It may just look really weird. Uh, but the partial time is zero, one minus partial time. I don't think it's doing what it wants. Um, I'm going to check out octave. I think I have the wrong values. No, octave. Come on, octave. Sine 0 is 0. Sine 1 is sine pi. It's 0. That's correct. I want pi divided by 2. And that gives me between 0 and 1, so pi divided by 2, that's correct. I'm going the wrong direction again. Where's that stupid thing? Sine 0 is 0. That's correct from the partial time plus the chase, so it should be partial time. So it's not it's not a continuous motion now. You actually see some stuttering, and I'm not actually see it, sure if that's worthwhile, because it's so fast. It's not. It doesn't really make sense. It, it it looks like a shuffling thing, and it's hard to tell whether that actually looks like it's shuffling between the positions, or it's more just like a glitch. And I don't know. I'll leave it there for now. It's a bit of code there. Uh, what else can we do that makes this fun? What else can we do to change this, how it works? Uh, yeah, we want to change. We have that git there, git status, git commit, 
common dots. We want to go to the game. We want to change eat me to be a game dot. Eat me is also a game dot now. And set next eat me. I'm going to do exactly this. Um, no, eat me dot position eat me dot previous position equals eat me dot position. And where is eat me? And this is now eaten head position to eat me the same thing. Eat me, eat me, eat me, eat me, eat me, eat me, eat me. Now technically we should step eat me, but it's an optimization that we don't have it, so we won't step it. Yeah right, 81. Yeah, we don't need the head position anymore, eaten. I don't know what I do wrong. Three, four, eight. Oh, game render. Oh yeah, game render. Um, now we need to have eat me. Eat me that position. What we can do here as well. I'd like to make these things appear. So we're going to take the eat me and we're going to say um, life or age. We're going to say an age and it's going to be an integer. And it's going to start at zero and that's the default. And so now down here we're going to say step dot on both of these. Eat me also equals step dot eat me and dot dot age plus equals one so it has an older age and what I want to do in the game renderer now is I'm going to push a scale on these things the partial box is going to be and only this dot needs it the other one doesn't maybe it's going to be state dot eat me dot age It's greater than zero. Um, how many phrases should it take to come in? Maybe, maybe it should take like five turns. Let's say it's less than five. It's less than five. Then it's going to be lossy float state dot eat me dot age divided by 5 plus partial time time otherwise it's going to be 1 and this box is always going to draw full and what I'm going to do is going to try to make them phase in as well push box we have a I just say partial we'll let it figure out what it wants and partial these are all fine we have a scale though here um, You have our center. Let's do this way. Partial as a float, and then we'll just say partial equals lossy G float, GL float. Partial. Center equals position dot x plus zero point five position dot y plus zero point five. Size equals partial times 0 0.5 and we can actually do it this way du duplicate it so we have two sides and then this simplifies this one so now this just becomes center minus size oh no that's not going to work we're going to have to actually do it individually so this is center dot si center dot x minus size dot x center dot y minus size dot y. So we're just we're offsetting this so we can have the thing grow a bit. This will be center dot x plus size dot x, and this will be center dot y minus size dot y. Center 
center.x plus size.x center.y plus size.y center dot center dot x minus size dot x center dot y plus size dot y so we make we're doing this and it should scale now if I did this right it's not contain symbol x um, oh yeah let's force this to an I point now this is a geo float if we don't force it it just becomes a generic tuple which is what we don't want we wanted to have a name tuple and da, 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 mismatch fundamental 238, 238. Position dot action. Oh, this is a float two. Type lacks fields 241. What did I do wrong? 241. Oh, come on. I did that wrong too. It's just size. I don't know why I did size dot y and size dot x. They just have size now. Well, what happened there? It's not coming back in. So he chased me. Game, eat me. Set next, eat me. Um, I don't know how much of this should be common yet. Chase me dot age. You should probably just create a new one, chase me dot age equals zero. And this is plus partial time divided by I think that works. There we go, the dot comes in now. Oop, that's perfect, that's what I wanted. Oop. So it takes five strains to come in, and I think that's reasonable for the dot. You can still see it. The other one should probably as well. Oh, no, 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 no. And these can both probably be combined into a single render dot function. Instead of push box. It's so probably almost we can probably almost replace push box, but we can push dot. Yeah, let's do it that way. Let's do push dot. State dot eat me. I'm gonna give it a color. chase me and eventually we can put this into a loop this is six and two and this stuff is going to become part of the push dot define push dot equal dot um, that's a uh, game dot game dot and color gl float three and this also needs a partial time. Partial time is a float. I only have to add that back in. This doesn't return anything. That's okay. What do we have? And this will be the last thing we do is factor this out, and then we should be okay. So we push box. We're going to take the uh, dot dot position. The color. And we have to keep merging these. Dot dot age. Flow to the dot dot age. We're going to convert the age to a partial time divided by one. And we're going to take this and put it at the top. Chase direction is dot dot position minus dot dot previous position. Partial time, that's that's doing the sign. Um, I don't know if I'll keep doing that, that's fine. And then we do it this way. Combine these two together. 
color, have the age. Now they should both come in. Unknown symbol state. I guess we need the state as well. Push dot. State. State. Partial time. Partial time. Now we can even easily start doing this stuff in a loop if we had a whole bunch of them. And why is the other dog moving? <laughs> uh, I did something wrong with the push dot, I guess. I must be referring to the fixed amount. Yeah, dot that previous position, not state dot previous dot. This can all be one line. There we go, now they grow in. They both grow in. And I think that's cool. If we had some sort of rotation, we can make stuff rotate as well, but we don't. And I said this the last thing, but let's fix the timer stuff when it's paused. Because right now if we pause it, pausing works, but if you're well, pausing doesn't quite work. Let's do this that we have. Let's fix that when the game's over. Although I don't know the game's over yet. So let's just leave that for now. Let's leave that for now. We'll get back to that later. We'll fix that. And so this is the way the game looks right now. What we did today is we have a moving dot and the things shrink in. They, they shrink in. They just still disappear. But they shrink in. And that moving dot can go in numerous locations. The fact it keeps going right is just a side effect of our crappy random number generator. But these dots at least come in. And they're not really dots, I mean they're squares, they like food. Alright, and so that's a game I didn't do very well. <laughs> um, let's play it a bit longer, I'm not very satisfied with that. Let's make this a bit bigger here. And I'll play this the way as my of saying, of signing off today. And... It looked like so, so we still have key issues. It looks like sometimes it doesn't look like it's getting all my keystrokes. I and mean, then I don't know which that what that is. Um, so what we did again today, reiterated, we we tried to animate between frames. So the game has a fixed frame interval. It's a step based game, but we're animating between the steps. This type of stuff is very common. If you watch me play coding game, it's very common there where the game actually has fixed intervals, but the animation tries to interpolate and do stuff in between. And this is also for a lot of video games, there are physics steps, but quite often the game itself, as complicated games, they have more internal frames than they have visual frames. So they don't have to do that same interpolation, they have a different type of interpolation they have to do. I don't know if we'll ever get to it in this game unless we had skeletal animation. And so we have that partial drawing and we also have the timings, like they, they scale in and come in, and this is several small things fitting together. We've accumulated a lot more to-dos in Leaf, and I'm gonna have to get to them, but I have to finish my platform stuff first. Once I get it on Mac, then I'll be considered finishing the platform stuff. It does work on Mac right now, but with my new platform branch, this one, honestly, it may not work on Mac right now, so I'll try to get it fixed right away. This may still be Linux, and the master branch does work on Mac, but the Wormies branch is now using the platform stuff because I had to test it and so it might not be working as well, or it might not be working. Just becomes a lot harder to try and get these dots now. <laughs> All right, can we get this one? There we go. So those ones are worth more. Later tonight, probably at around nine or 10, try 10 if you're uncertain. Um, you can always follow me on Twitch. Uh, follow me on Twitch and Twitter just so you know when I'm live because I'll always post it. And, oh, I'll trap that up. And I'll go live to the end of the site. We're, we're playing the competition, and the competition is a lot of heuristics. I'm going to, first bit, I'm going to rewrite my code, simplify it again, and then we're going to try some new stuff. We're trying to avoid the strategy we took last time of just tweaking it to get by. 
we want to see if we can write code that actually makes sense and it's easy to tweak new stuff because in botters it was really hard to come up with new strategies and so this time we want to be able to change it quicker to get new strategies and And so that's where we're going to change, keep changing the code because we're not doing so well right now in the competition. We made it, I mean, we made the basic training, and but that's not that challenging. Oh, great, I'm right in front of the dots. <laughs> um, oh no, I died. So this game is going well. I think, I hope it's helpful to somebody for. Uh, <clears throat> We're talking about game design here, GL graphics, and leaf, and coding, and all that stuff. And it's, it's all fitting together in my language. And just to double check, this is, this is GL. I mean, this is all accelerated here, of course. <laughs> accelerated, super useful. Um, the worm costs way more to draw than you'd expect. <laughs> but our GL card still has no problem with it. And I'll keep going with this probably next weekend. I'm away this week. That means the competition won't continue. Oh, I'll do it this evening, but it won't continue next Saturday as well. During this week will be no streams because I'm not actually by my computer. I'll be writing some articles maybe and see where that goes. I thank you very much for watching me. And don't forget to follow and subscribe and support me to keep it going. And thank you very much.